Hello and welcome. Today, I'd like to show you how we can use our ZMB3000 Network Analyzer to perform compression point measurements on amplifiers. In this video, we're going to use a small signal USB powered amplifier, which we have connected between ports one and two. And on the instrument, we'll start by configuring the frequency range that we'll perform the measurement over. So 100 megahertz to start, and we'll stop at three gigahertz. We'll connect the power and we can see initially check that we have some gain out of this device. I need to read just scale that, pop a marker on there and we have around 20 dBs of gain. So that's good. My amplifier is on and it's increasing the signal level from port one. Now what we're going to do to set up the compression point measurement, we'll add a second channel, which we'll use for the compression point. So in the channel menu, copy channel and diagram, and now down here, we have a replication of the gain measurement that we have at the top. With that one selected, in the measurement menu, we can go down to the gain compression dialog, and then in here, go to the settings for gain compression. If I go to the help, this will give me some explanation about how the measurement's being made and the definition of compression point. If I just scroll down, there's a nice dialog here where we can see along the bottom, we have the input power that's being swept over. And along the, the left-hand axis here, we have the gain of the amplifier. And we can see that for most of the region of power, then the gain is flat, so our amplifier is linear. And we get to a point where, as we increase the power to a certain point, our amplifier becomes non-linear and the gain drops off, indicating that we've now got into compression and hence saturation of the amplifier. The ZMB3000 will automate this measurement, so it makes that swept measurement and establishes the compression point for every frequency point across the axis. So we get a swept compression point measurement across frequency. And also, just before we come out of the help, there's a part that I'll show at the end here, which is called skipping the linear part. And this helps us to optimize the measurement and save measurement time, because if we've already established that most of the power points along here are not necessary because the device is linear. Once we've established where the compression is, the ZMB3000 will skip this part of the power measurements and only focus on the region where the device is nonlinear. So that helps us to speed up the measurement. For this measurement, today on this amplifier, we will sweep between minus 25 and plus 5 dBm. This amplifier has an input compression value of around about zero dBm. So we should be able to catch it nice, nicely with those values. Choose OK. And now we have to select what the measurement is that we're going to make for this compression point. And I'm going to choose compression point power out. So that's the output compression value. And it's just off the screen, so we need to refocus this. Just scale that back to the middle. And then maybe Zoom in a little bit so we can see the compression value at this frequency, 1.55 gigahertz, is around about 18.1 dBm, but we haven't calibrated yet, so um, we'll, we'll do that next. But before we do, go back into the measurement of the compression point. Currently, we are looking at a compression value of 1 dB, so that's where the value drops down 1 dB lower than the linear value. But if your device wants to measure a different value, maybe like a receiver, uh, it might want to choose, say, 0 0.1 dB. You, you, you can choose arbitrarily what you want in there. So the next step is we'll go through and calibrate this up. Before we do, we just want to be absolutely sure that this compression value that we're measuring is coming from the device under test and not down to our receiver because we're putting too much power from the DUT into our receiver. On the ZMB3000, we recommend a maximum operational power of around plus 13 dBm. That's not the maximum power that's shown on the front panel, which is the damage level. That's the maximum power we can put in here before any effects of nonlinearity might be observed. I've already measured this, and this has around about an 18 dBm compression value. So similar to what I expect with the amplifier. So just so we can get accurate measurements, I'm gonna add an external attenuator to, to bring that level down, but I'm gonna include that in the calibration. Some of our ZMB3000s have the ability, if I go into the power menu, 
to include step attenuators at the receiving port, but this one does not, so I'll show it manually with an attenuator. In the calibration menu, we'll start the calibration. We'll go into the Smarter Cal, start calibration unit, and because we have two channels that we set up at the beginning, one for S parameters, one for compression point, I want to calibrate both of those, so we'll select all channels. Select OK. And then you can see we're calibrating ports one and two. We're using an automatic calibration unit that we see over here. So we don't have to connect manual calibration standards, but we can, of course, if that's the only choice that we have. And the other thing just to note again is the calibration type. As I said, in this particular case, we're using a 6dB attenuator, and that value gives us enough scope so that we can do a full two-port measurement without worrying about the reduced directivity at port two. If we have a value higher than 10 dBs because we have higher output power coming from your DUT and we need to protect port two and make sure it doesn't go nonlinear, then we need to make sure that we use a different calibration style like a one path two port where no reverse measurement is needed. We don't care about the directivity. Here we have power unknown through open short match selected. And now we can click next. And what I will do is disconnect the amplifier and connect the calibration unit and we'll run through the steps for the calibration. So now with the DUT disconnected, we've connected the calibration unit, ensuring that I've got my attenuator at port two. And we can press start. And then in here, we've automatically configured that port one is connected to port one, the cal unit, port two to port two. You can redefine this if you wish, but that's the default settings. And now if we press start, it will run through the measurements of all the calibration standards on the calibration unit and establish the system error correction. That's step one. Step two, now we move to the power meter. So I'm going to disconnect the calibration unit and connect the power meter and do the power calibration. So with the USB power meter connected to port one, we can now run step two. What that will do, that will take the accurate power measurements collected from the power meter and correlate that back to the reference receiver at port one. That will sweep through both channels. And then once that's complete, the system error correction will apply the power calibration that we've just made also to port two. And when we've got to that last step, we can then apply, and that calculates all the system error correction and applies calibration to each of the traces. Okay, now with the calibration step complete, I've reconnected my amplifier, powered it up, and now we can see the live results on the network analyzer for both the gain and the compression point measurements. Now, if we look at the bottom trace here, which are swept compression point, so from 100 megahertz to three gigahertz, it's around 18 dBm at 1.55 gigahertz. Remember I mentioned earlier that we have this setting for skip linear sweep section. You get an indication for the update rate based on the marker that is flowing from left to right. If I just turn this on, now you can see it's about twice as fast. Of course, it would depend on what your stop power was in terms of how many other power measurement points it needed, but it just gives you an indication for the, the improvement that you can make um, by removing those unnecessary power measurements. Maybe to complete as well, I can go back to the S parameters. Because I've got a full calibration, I can maybe add the S11 trace in here as well. So I've got knowledge of the return loss into the amplifier. So here you can see then we can add all the necessary traces and accurately characterize small signal amplifiers like we are here. Hopefully you found this video useful and it shows how we can use the ZMB3000 for measuring active devices. And if you need any more information, please visit our website where there's loads more videos and content which will make your life much easier when you're performing these measurements yourself.